Thank you, Dr. Alka. Come, I'll just make a comment. Because we're, we're running, running short, short of time, time I, I will... will. So a very good noon to everyone present here. First of all, thank you team IDEC, uh, Neeta ma'am, Sanjay sir, Archana ma'am, Anjali ma'am, everyone for having me for this debate. Um, sir, um, can I just request you to start with the case? And then sure, sure, sure. Yeah. So uh, this is a classical case now, Mr. X, who has come for routine lab workup for his renewal of his insurance policy. And uh, history-wise, there was no past history, there is no past history of diabetes, blood pressure or any dyslipidemia. But family history is positive, his father has diabetes and ischemic heart disease. And the physical examination, he's obese, slightly obese, uh, weight is 82 kg, BMI of 27 kilogram per meter square, BP is 140, 82, systemic examination is dead normal. And the lab parameters are a bit, you know, abnormal, the fasting is 108 or 116, 108. somewhere. So it's above 105, so surely. And PP sugar is 152, A1C is 6.0, and total cholesterol is 196, LDL is 115, triglyceride is 185, creatinine is 0.9, LFTs are normal. Now, uh, Ami, how do you put this case as a diagnosis from the point of view of insurance policy uh, renewal. Yes. So um, this gentleman comes to us and I'm going to be dealing with lifestyle modification. How do I help this gentleman in, since he's been diagnosed with pre-diabetes? So, so here is someone who is a little uncertain, a little confused, a little disoriented. He, is, he comes to us for help and that's where we come into play. We would like to help him, support him, and guide him the best way possible so that he can avoid diabetes and prevent long-term complications. It's a famous saying by Dr. Lord Buddha that every human being is the author of his own health or disease. That's where our role comes into play. Here is when we can empower our patients, motivate them to follow the correct lifestyle modifications and changes and bring about the change we are all looking at. So before you know, understand, going ahead with what we want to motivate our patient with, let's have a word about what pre-diabetes is all about. So pre-diabetes is not a disease. In fact, it's a pre-diagnosis of diabetes. It's a zone between being normoglycemic and hyperglycemic. So it's a warning sign. The ADA says that pre-diabetes should not be viewed as a clinical entity in its own right, but rather than an increased risk of diabetes and cardiovascular disease. Now, when you have to quantify what, you know, what values do the patient would have to be called as a pre-diabetic, so any fasting sugars between 100 and 124 and any postprandial sugars between 140, that is post 75 gram glucose load between 140 to 199 or an HbA1c between uh, say 5.7 to 6.4 is when a patient is quantified to be having pre-diabetes. And that's what the gentleman which we are discussing about had a sh fasting sugar a little on the higher side, PP a little on the higher side, and A1C of six. So he kind of classifies to being a pre-diabetic. Now when we talk about the epidemiology of pre-diabetes, the IDF says that it was 7% in 2013, which is supposed to be expected to rise to around 8% in 2035. We have our own Indian data. We have uh, Dr. Anjana here, the CURE study, which says that from those who were having normal glucose tolerance, 19.4% converted to diabetes and 25.7% to pre-diabetes. So which gives an overall glyce dysglycemia rates to be around 45.1%. And among those with pre-diabetes, 58.9% converted to diabetes, which is huge. It is said that 5 to 7% of the patients who have pre-diabetes convert into diabetes every year. So any pre-diabetic, has 70% chance of converting to a diabetic, a full-blown diabetic, in his lifetime. And this is where we want to stop and get these figures down. Now, let's explain this gentleman a little better about pre-diabetes. So, talking about what are the risk factors of pre-diabetes, one is physical inactivity, any first degree relative with diabetes, high risk race and ethnicity, 
In any female patient who would had gestational diabetes, dyslipidemia and hypertension can be a risk factor. A1C around 5.7 or anyone who had had an impaired fasting glucose or an impaired glucose tolerance on a prior, prior testing. Conditions which are associated with insulin resistance like severe obesity, acanthosis, PCOS history, or any patient having history of cardiovascular disease. Now, if you see the risk factors, some of them are modifiable, some of them are non-modifiable. At least, the modifiable risk factors, if we take care of, we can reduce the risk of turning from pre-diabetes to diabetes. So, it's rightly said, your genetics load the gun, but your lifestyle pulls the trigger. And trust me, lifestyle is a cornerstone for every one of us, being a normal glycemic, a pre-diabetic, or a, a full-blown diabetic. So here is the part where we empower, we help our patients. And how do we do that? We all know that the main components of lifestyle management are nutrition therapy, physical activity, weight management, smoking cessation, and behavioral therapy. These form the cornerstones of treating our patients with pre-diabetes and helping them to convert to normoglycemia. We are not going to be going into a de the details of each one, but when we understand the details of every one of them and their role in our patients with pre-diabetes, let's start with nutrition counseling. So if you see studies on nutrition counseling, if you see, it's a running slide, but if you see on the, uh, on the left hand side, the weight, BMI, the waist circumference was drastically reduced when patients were put on lifestyle modifications in the experimental group. In fact, we had one more study which need to be said about is, uh, which was uh, published in 2020, where they had, uh, it was by Anwin uh, D. et al., where they had recruited patients with pre-diabetes and they gave them low carbohydrate diet for around 23 months and the weight reduction seen was around 8.3 kgs and 93% of the patients converted from pre-diabetes to having normal glycemia. Again, physical activity. ADA says that around 150 minutes of physical activity every week is what is ad to be advised or advocated to our patients with pre-diabetes or diabetes. And if we see the effect of this physical activity on the different inflammatory markers like adiponectin, leptin, or any other inflammatory markers, they have seen that it favors in bringing down these inflammatory markers in patients who had physical activity with or without lifestyle modification. Now, the importance of weight management cannot be undermined. Like, with every one kg of weight gain, there's increased risk of developing diabetes by 4 to 5 percent. And every one kg of weight loss, there is a reduction in risk of developing diabetes by 16 percent. So, as Nita Ma'am says, smile is the way to go for weight management. Smile is scientifically proven, medically uh, inspired, uh, I is, um, I think, ma'am, intervention, intervention, uh, integrated approach, integrated um, approach, long term, and it should be un enjoyable. So, a smile is the way to go for weight management. And what the guidelines say about weight management is that if you bring around five to seven percent of weight loss in the patients, that is enough to bring down the risk of any patient converting from pre-diabetes to diabetes. And why to 5 to 7% was selected was because it was found to be feasible and sustainable and reduces the risk of converting from pre-diabetes to diabetes. Also, when this effect of lifestyle management was seen in our own patients on the biomarkers of adiposity, inflammation, and gut hormones, what they had seen was in the intervention group, there was significant changes in the uh, interleukin-6 TNF-alpha. So there is a role of all this, the diet, physical activity, and lifestyle improvement in bringing down the, uh, the risk of diabetes along with cardiovascular uh, morbidity and mortality. We had a wonderful yoga session today in the morning, and that's why I put this slide about the role of yoga also cannot be undermined because it can be used as an adjuvant along with exercise. So yoga, in addition to bringing down the metabolic parameters, will also help the patient to relieve their stress, depression, and anxiety, and improve the patient's attitude and self-control. Now, there have been various studies which have, you know, tried to understand the importance of lifestyle management in our patients with pre-diabetes. 
the diabetes prevention program, the Finnish diabetes prevention study, the Darkin study, and many other studies. And all these have unanimously agreed to the fact that intervention is the uh, lifestyle intervention is the way to go because it brings down the risk of developing diabetes more than in the patients who are on the placebo arm or the metformin arm. In the DPP study, they had shown the incidence of diabetes was 39% lower in the lifestyle intervention group as compared to the metformin group. And what was marked in this study was that though metformin and lifestyle were similarly effective in restoring the normal fasting glucose values, but the lifestyle intervention was more effective in restoring to the normal post-load glucose values. So lifestyle definitely, again I'm saying, is the right way to go in our patients with pre-diabetes. And also in TPP program, they had seen that it was the patients who were on lifestyle group had shown a, a better quality of life and it was more cost effective too. In fact, one more study which was just published this year and we, were talk, we had a technology symposium just before this debate, it, there was one delight study which was published in this year where they had used a smart uh, phone app technology of talking about lifestyle modifications to the patient where they had a virtual consultation with dietitian and there also they had seen significant changes in terms of bringing down the body weight and BMI. All these studies, when they did the follow-up after 10 to 15 years, they had seen that the patients who were on the lifestyle modification group did much better in terms of bringing down the, uh, bringing down the incidence of diabetes as compared to the other groups. So I would not leave, like to leave this gentleman here, but in fact, I would like to counsel him and follow up with him regularly. So that is very important because to, to monitor the weight loss progress, provide ongoing counseling for lifestyle modification is the right way to go, screenings as and when required for diabetes and for modifiable risk factors at each intervention. So it's rightly said, the sooner people find out that they have pre-diabetes and take action, the better chances of preventing type 2 diabetes. Thank you for your patient hearing.